there may have been a time when the gap between the Leon and its 18 hold cousin was quite big. Not anymore. Thanks for joining us. Welcome back to Nobby on Cars. This is the Leon FR. They've also left this little baby in the boot for me. This is the Sayus powered by Segway e-scooter because Sayus don't just do cars, you know. And it fits in the boot, which I'll get around to in a second. The rear quarter of the car is the bit that might divide people most. The nose is much sharper, but the lines and creases across the bonnet, they just lean towards the grille. I'm loving it. The F4 in particular, overall, I think is better looking than you know who. Those sharp lines continue on the headlights of the car, LEDs, little picture bits that are little triangles that have reflective bits in them and they match up on the dashboard. And that's the real difference about this Leon over previous ones. The attention to detail is amazing. Upgraded 18 inch alloy wheels, which have kind of got gray and a kind of a duller alloy finish on them, but look really, really smart. Normally if a car had a party piece like the Leon does, especially at night on the way, this sweeps across and it's continued the theme inside the car. More details in a few seconds. You think it was trying to make up for something, but it's not. This Leon badge on the back, I'm not sure it's gonna last the test of time, just in, in terms of the style of it. It's kind of a talicky and like as if someone has handwritten the name on the back of the car. F4 badge also. A hairdryer and a quick bit of dental floss will remove that though, and it'll look a lot cleaner. And then you've got the boot. The only thing I can say negative about it is it doesn't have a 12 volt socket. It does have a spare wheel, however, which is down here. So, you know, simpler to change when you're stuck at four o'clock in the morning in the ring of Kerry. Parcel shelf comes out, obviously, and your rear seats go into the car, giving you lots of extra space. I mean, just look at that. Just look at that line. I mean, it's across the Turaco range and many other cars now. I hope to keep it up. Yes, if you go looking for them, there's a few things you'll find missing from this car and just the smallest of ways that they've left the extra special bits for the Golf, but they really are few and far between. Also, this Leon over the previous model is actually about 50 mils longer and the best place that it benefits from is right here in the back where there's more leg room. Like we're not talking far off Skoda superb level of leg room in the back if your driver isn't six foot five, because there's really a noticeable big difference here. A very generous armrest, which you can actually fit things in, and there's access to the rear boot through there. You get that on the Leon, handy. The F4 seats are comfortable, a slight bit of uh, side bolsters in the back, USB C's in both options here, but there are two of them. But you'll need adapters because we're not there yet. Uh, you also get rear independent climate control for rear passengers in the FR model. And there's door pockets, there's door pockets, and there's their seat pockets, there's seat pockets, and there's door pockets. Even how high the seats are off the floor is really, really positive. The little clips at the side of the seat here is good for holding the seatbelt into place so it doesn't get caught when you're changing these. And as someone who does have to, on a weekly basis, change Isofix seat from car to car, I can tell you that the Leon, uh, it's not great. It's not quite as bad as the previous generation Skoda Fabia because that would make you absolutely want to take a hammer to the car. But just finding the little access point can be difficult prizing apart the seat and trying to get it in you'll probably only do it once but it will annoy you that one time so 23,910 euro is where the Leon starts from in Ireland there's the estate version coming very very soon and there's even a Cupra version which looks absolutely savage this one however is the F4 you're going to pay a little bit more for that but you know what the whole package and the price you can get it for in something like this two litre TDI, it's not bad at all. Yeah. 
the privilege of owning an F4 version of the car in the 1.5 150 brake horsepower TSI engine or ETSI these days is a little over 28,000 euro. And for that you're getting a lot, this bigger screen, which hasn't got any sort of buttons on it whatsoever. There's independent climate on this side and this side and your volume most of the time it, it, it's okay sometimes you're pressing it or sliding across it it's going to get full of fingerprints but it's the way so many manufacturers are going or have gone um, down here is wireless charging for your car again in the f4 version usb-c two ports here armrest decent space uh, and a 12 volt down here the gear shifter for the seven speed dsg box is really really small like to the point where you don't really feel like you're connected with the car in the transmission way at all. You just pull it back and you let it do its thing, which it does very well, but it's just, it's tiny. Steering wheel, it's just gorgeous. There's bits of brushed aluminium. You've got perforations, red stitching, F4 badge down the bottom, and it's got a nice chunky feel to it. It's perfect, like, do not touch the steering wheel. The glove box is good. The blind spot is in here. So that will go orange, no matter what color you change the interior, which you can do, by the way. These will go orange. It's not in the mirrors, which probably means if somebody damages that, it's less expensive to replace. So good thinking there. Some ways that you can tell there has been a bit of cost saving is you always got a sunglasses holder up here in these kind of cars from, say, a Volkswagen it's gone. The light cluster's down here and it's just blended in with hard plastic. In the Golf, it sits a bit higher and it's got a nice polished black plastic surround. So there's little small things where you'll go, okay, that's, that's a little bit cheaper than the Golf, but this is like seriously close now. We're gonna have the Golf on the channel next week. So keep an eye out for it. Hit the bell notification button and it'll pop up when it's ready. But there is not a huge set back now in this car compared to that other cousin it's it's just not there this probably looks better if you go for the f4 version you're getting all this technology you can connect your device up to a seat wi-fi little network hub in the car there's so many customizable ways that screen can look you can set it up to your preferences same thing for the instrument cluster here you'll get to set it up and tailor it to whatever way you want you can have traditional ish style digital uh, dials or more of a speedo on it and at all times you have the speed limit for the current road you're on in your line of sight which means you can take it easy Again, those little bits of attention to detail I was mentioning earlier on, the picture of the car, when you press that to change settings in it, the headlights come on in the image, you know, just little subtle things that are, are a bit special. So I think you'll agree, when you look at all the bits that you get in the standard, the trim, the details in the car, it's a pretty nice option, the new Leon. It really is a glorious looking car. And maybe that's colour dependent, maybe it's the paint, maybe it's the wheels, maybe it's the whole F4 package. But I think I take this over many other hatchbacks. There is a look of a focus of it sometimes and BMW 1 series, they're also good looking cars though. Even the key looks expensive. So I think we can all agree by now that it looks good, but how does it drive? That's, that's one of the most important things. So let's jump in and go for a spin and find out. first owned a 2 litre TDI from Volkswagen Audi Seat in the mid noughties and I remember thinking how balanced they were in terms of economy, performance, running costs, just the whole thing was just spot on and here we are 15 years later and it hasn't changed. You will easily creeping around even you know, not long distance driving, doing four, four litres per 100 kilometres with this diesel engine. Now, obviously not going to, if you're doing lots of short driving and stuff like that, just get the 1.5 uh, ETSI, which they're now calling it because there's little bits of mild hybrid stuff going on. But this is a, it's just a remarkable engine. If you do need a diesel, if you do, 
plan on doing decent commutes and journeys in your new Leon, just don't even think about it. Just get this two liter diesel engine because it's just such a great all rounder. Now if you get the upgraded alloys, which this FR has, it can be a little bit harsh at times. Now, the car will also go nicely over uh, ramps and stuff without too much fuss, but I just find it's a little bit hard on these more low profile tires and bigger alloy wheels. It's really quiet once you're on the move, so you barely even notice that you're driving a diesel, to be honest with you. There's plenty of mid range torque, you'd kind of expect that anyway. You'd be, you'd be like, where's the torque? If uh, if it didn't have it, sitting in idle now, you'd you'd know uh, the car is cold. Also, you'd know that you're sitting in a diesel. And that initial rev, very smooth uh, gear changes. We have a seven-speed DSG gearbox. So as you can see, there's plenty of grunt. Yeah, it's a little bit noisy if you're accelerating hard. It's a diesel, but it gets you on the move quickly. So there's a ramp and you know, it goes over it and it's, it's, the suspension is quite forgiving on that. It's more, I find, if there's um, a harsh uneven surface or you're just I don't know there's, there's, there's some imperfections in the road that's when you can kind of feel the bumps but I'm sure that is you know part of just the fact that the, the wheels are quite a bit bigger on this car it handles well uh, there, there really is there's very little to knock in this car I think coming from the previous model Golf platform that this car now sits on in the Mark 8. That was just so good. Now that beeping has happened a couple of times where it says take over the steering. Now I've been holding the steering wheel. I haven't let go. Never let go Jack. Um, so I don't necessarily understand why it's doing that. That's one little nitpicky thing I can I can point out and the lane keeping can be a little bit contradictory as well because again it's it picking up a line and it's saying make sure you drive between the lines but I am I am say it overall though we are talking about a very very capable car and that gap between this and you know who has just maybe gotten so tight now that there's not a huge difference whatsoever. And that says more about this car than it does about the other one. So, hopefully this may have helped you make up your mind about the car, found out a few more features in it. If you do have any further questions, that's what the comment section are for. Ways to support the channel are down below. And uh, yeah, the Leon is in a good place. Welcome back.